Hey, so this is a, an item that comes up quite a lot and it's uh, whether to use a UI library or not. Uh, if you don't know, basically, if you're doing front-end development, there are all these out-of-the-box libraries you can use. Examples include Ant Design, Material UI, Bootstrap, Tailwind UI, and uh, sometimes it makes sense to use them. Basically, the benefit is you'll be able to move way quicker. They give you tons of components out of the box and you don't have to have your developers writing all of them. Now, you, there are the pro, pros and cons to this. Anytime you take an existing solution that is going to come with its downsides, um, specifically with UI libraries, the downsides are one, it might look like quite generic. Um, a lot of other companies will be using the same UI libraries. So if you use Material UI, your UI will look just like Google's. You may not want that. You may want your own unique brand, especially you have if you have a designer, they may want to do it completely custom. And inevitably, every project it does have its own custom pieces. And I guess a really solid project, um, eventually, like companies aren't building off of UI libraries. They're doing it all custom. Facebook isn't using some generic design. They like designers sit down and they go build it. So a lot of companies will get to that stage eventually. And then moving off of your existing UI library can sometimes be difficult. We've definitely spoken and worked with companies where that's a challenge. So there's no obvious right answer. What should you do? But if you do want to get moving really quickly, if this is a hackathon or even you want a three month MVP and then you'll redo it afterwards, like UI libraries could be great. There are loads of big projects, even companies worth hundreds of millions, billions of dollars that use things like Ant Design and continue to use it even once they get really popular. So it's really up to you to decide. I'm gonna take you through a few of them right now. So this is Ant Design that we have on screen. If you're not familiar with it, this is actually my favorite one um, in terms of sort of a library of the most out of the box components. Um, this is sort of all the different things they have. We're just gonna jump to the buttons. Um, this is a library that comes from China and yeah, um, the Ant Finance and companies like that. Alibaba, I believe. Um, so if we just look all these buttons, for example, they're, they're ready built. Um, if you want to use them in your code, it's basically just doing this. You import button from Andesign, and then if you add this line, you're going to get this button. And what's amazing about Andesign is they go into so much detail. Like if you like, click on these buttons, you'll see sort of these small animations, and you'll see that throughout these so, small subtle animations that your front end developers won't always. Uh, give you and obviously they've covered every single state which can also be a bit of work sometimes and there's just so many different forms of every single item so this is just buttons and we can already see like we have a ton here um, you know danger text uh, different sizes icons here we have loading um, all sorts of things going on um, there are more over here here we have a button with sort of a small menu next to it there's, as you can see there's just a ton of different buttons and there we're, we're just getting started if we look at um, Let's say we look at breadcrumbs. Another small item here are different examples of breadcrumbs. Um, and if you want to get the code for them, you can just open it up down here. So this is a basic breadcrumb, breadcrumb and breadcrumb item. There are way more complicated items as well. For example, steps, I believe. So this is like quite a complicated component. You need three different steps. You need icons, you have loading. And basically they thought of everything for you. Um, what's another nice one? Time picker, calendar picker. These are like some really complex components. Uh, things like this, calendar date picker might be even nicer to show. Um, for example, here, date range. So I want from this date to here, whenever it is, and end date this time. So this full component, if you want it, is just a few lines of code, basically. Just range picker and pick equals week, whatever it is, and that will be it. And even on this page, you have loads of different examples, disabled state, everything you can imagine. And um, yeah, uh, there's subtle animations I was mentioning, like sort of when you open things up, they sort of, uh, it's a nice effect is a tree select, another like component we actually used on a project once. Um, and most libraries wouldn't have this. So it's really nice to have that, to know that with Ant Design, you're gonna get everything. Here's a big calendar component. I mean, there's, there's so much to show here. I'm not going to go through everything, but this whole calendar component at the box, cards, carousels, it's difficult to find an item here that, um, yeah, yeah, to think of a component that won't be in hand design. Here are some a more simple component, just tabs, progress, skeleton, like it just keeps going. Um, so yeah, hand design definitely worth checking out. Um, I know it's uh, React support is good and, um, I think they also have support for other libraries. If you want to see an example, basically what I'd recommend for any library you look at, look at the components overview. Every UI library will have like a components page and you can just go through and see like what each item looks like. 
jumping to Ant Design Pro, this is also free. You can click on preview. Um, and this is what Ant Design Pro looks like. Um, all the code here is open source. You can grab it off GitHub. And basically, you can go create dashboards like this. This is just taking existing Ant Design pieces and just putting them together. If, well, like if you look at Ant Design for the nav bar, you'll see things like this. Um, the forms page, you'll see I have step form. We can see an example of what we saw just before in the demo. So here's the step above. Uh, and Design Pro, sometimes the things are in Chinese. I change to English, but it's not all the pages work. But either way, that doesn't matter. And Design itself is like has great support for English. Some of the libraries connected to and Design have less support for English, so be careful there. Um, but yeah, you can do a lot. You can see the examples of what can be built. Another library a lot of people like to use is Material Design. So here's an example of it. Over here is a menu that I have. As you can see, this is, it might remind you of the Google design. That's because Google created Material Design and there's lots of implementations in every different language. Here we're looking at the React one and this is what the code will look like. If you look down the side, these are the components. They've also got a fair number. They have nowhere near as many as Ant Design, but still it's going to cover a lot of your use cases. In terms of aesthetics, I'm personally not the biggest fan. It feels just like, I don't know, it feels a bit bland to me um, and it's been used a bit too much and design still hasn't hit that uh, spot where it's been overused. Um, you can see sort of these wave effects and so on, how standard jumps up. This is all built out of the box. You just added the one line text for it as follows. Um, customizing these styles, I believe uh, Material UI has improved on that quite a lot. Uh, some, yeah, that's one of the big challenges you're going to face. Are you able to um, change the style? Let's say you have this input, but you want it to be green instead of blue. How easy is it that to do? So that can be a challenge sometimes with these UI libraries. A change as simple as color change is probably um, ready to use out of the box, but some other changes might be a bit harder for you. You're doing for your developers, so beware of that. I think Material has improved on that side over the last few years since uh, Material UI 4 came out. The most famous example of a UI library is actually Bootstrap. Um, I probably recommend it less today. I, I think it, it, this is Bootstrap 4. It's still, it looks okay. Um, but I guess this is sort of, it came from Twitter Bootstrap um, and it can definitely be used successfully on a lot of projects. Uh, personally, I'd also, I guess, avoid it today, but this is a personal preference here, I guess, is what progress bar looks like um, and so on. And the last one I'd like to cover, it's a bit different to the others. It's actually Tailwind UI. So what Tailwind, Tailwind UI, Tailwind is a CSS styling library. Um, it's like an alternative to writing CSS or style components or emotion or SAS, whatever you would use. Um, and then the creators of Tailwind actually came out with Tailwind UI, so, which is basically a way to create pages um, and components. And they give you a lot out of the box. Um, not the, They don't have the huge number of components you might see in Ant Design, like calendars and things, but they give you a lot of different styles. And um, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by this. So for example, if you want a header component, they will give you this. Um, and over here is the code if you want to grab it. This is actually a paid library. Uh, oh, sorry, this is just to show on mobile. Uh, this And this is the code. So you'd go and copy and paste this code in. You can see this is like Tailwind. Uh, this is how you write basically the styling in Tailwind. Um, so you can see it's a lot more than just a single component. It's not just a button. They do have pages where it's just buttons, but it's giving you a full design sort of thing. So for your homepage, you could have this. You could have the one above. There's a lot of different options here. Here you have another type of homepage, and all you do is copy and paste that uh, code straight in. You can see you have loads here if you want to sign in on the homepage. So we have a, about five different hero sections for your homepage. Here's an example of a pricing section uh, that you might want. So this is really nice. You just copy and paste this code, and it, you, it's working immediately. Um, again, a few different options. There's another option. Each one looks quite different. This is sort of quite a common style you'll see online. Anyway, we have good like five, seven different styles. These are the benefits of each style. Um, yeah, and so on. Show you a quick form layout. Um, again, this is all ready built and you can just copy and paste the code. And you can see there's a few different styles here. So on. Another style, tabs on the side or um, yeah, and then here's a sign-in page, for example. It's pretty good, simple to the point, already built for you. You could have the one with an image down the side. And here's there's also a few examples of the home pages. So this is, let's say, an, a 
a dashboard within your app. And here's another example, basically putting together these different styles and what it might look like um, using the different components that I'll give you and so on. Uh, yeah, so that's Tailwind UI. It costs around $250. Um, I've been using it on a project for the last few months. I can recommend it. Um, and yeah, that's a brief overview. View, happy to answer any questions and I hope this video was helpful.